pretty nice, but I'm going to go brighter. Now, I'm, it's not perfectly circle, or not a perfect circle, I should say. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> so it doesn't matter because I'm going to float a cloud underneath it. That was the plan. Hi, I'm Kevin Hill, and today we're going to do a beautiful painting with a lot of soft colors and a lot of sunlight. It should be fun. Now, last week I mentioned that I had paintings for sale on the website. We still have a few, and I'm going to be selling this one here that I paint today. So if you're interested, check the link in the description and definitely go check it out on the website. And if you're looking forward to seeing this and you'd like to see more, be sure to leave a like and subscribe for more painting videos. All right, let's get started. We'll start off today with a very vibrant yellow color. It's a great place to start when you're doing a sunset, isn't it? Now today we're going to focus less on actual landscape and more on the color. You know what I mean? It's going to be just trees for the most part, some foreground, but nothing crazy. But what we are going to do is spend just a lot of effort trying to get these colors really nice. So hopefully it'll be something a little different and fun. There we go. Maybe work this color just across to the right there. I am going to add, there's my yellow, by the way. I had more white in it in here to start, and then I put less white. Of course, I've got a little bit of white and clear gel in the background. And if you need some of that, definitely go to the website and check it out. we got all that sort of stuff. Everything that you see me using, we've got available for you. All right, that is what I would call halfway decent. <laughs> oh, yeah. Maybe work that orange right around right around the yellow. That totally works. A little bit up here. I mean, we are going to cover it with clouds. Lots of beautiful clouds today in our sunset, but it doesn't hurt to get a little, little bit of that red, at least as a borderline. We're going to use purple as our cloud color, but it doesn't hurt to have a little safety ring of, of, of red around your yellow. So we'll put a little turquoise at the top. That's really pretty. Now I'm just dropping in a few smaller clouds, not anything terrible. Well, I mean, they're kind of large, but you know what I mean? They're not huge. They're sort of in between. They're in between clouds. Oh, uh, yeah. You can see I've got a little bit of a mess going here. I couldn't even tell you what the colors are. Just, well, I could. I've got my yellows, my reds, and a little bit of purple every once in a while. But <laughs> it's all sorts of different combinations of, of those colors. I definitely have some pink going on. I do have some purple on the edges. I did a lot of orange in the middle. Getting ready to do some more, more purples. But anyway, you just kind of can't, you can't overdo the amount of colors. You know, you just, the more colors you add, the better it looks. I, I don't think it's possible to overdo the amount of colors that you have. As long as they kind of go together. You wouldn't want to put green up here or something funny. You know what I mean? But yeah, hopefully it makes sense. Cool. As we get away from the light source, of course, we get a little bit darker and we start slipping into the purple tones again. I like the idea of keeping it kind of shine, <laughs> keeping it just nice and, and subtle over there. Not quite so crazy, maybe more like that. Well, there we go. Yeah, even bringing some of this over here like that. That's good. So you see, we'll play around with it a lot. Okay, good. Now let me just real quick wipe my brush, grab a little red, a little blue, a little white, and that was a not quite right color. <laughs> there we go. That looks just the tiniest bit better. See how you can play with color? Good. Now let's try this out. Nice. Starting to get kind of into the purple tones. We'll do our, our pretty little um, uh, turquoise spot. <laughs> So I'll kind of leave room for that. I don't mind putting it in afterward. It'd be, it'd be just fine. No worries. Of course, more blue as you get away from the sunset. Now I've got a soft turquoise color going right up here. So here it is on the palette. Took me a couple of tries, as you can see, but I wanted it nice and light. I almost think it could be lighter. Let's do that real quick. It's sometimes, you know, you have to stick it up on the canvas and decide whether or not you like it. There, that's, uh, that's pretty decent. So we'll just sort of rub that in. Maybe open the clouds up just a little. So we see a little more sky showing through. Step back, kind of get a good look. Make sure it's, it's working. 
seems to be actually seems to be looking really quite nice what's nice is this will also kind of overpower the clouds up there so you can open them up very very easily it's no big deal may or may not you know want to add that back probably do <laughs> that's a funny looking cloud we don't want that up there all right let me see maybe just get a little more a little more turquoise on the side good but you see how that just creates a little feeling of oh, there's a little more going on in this painting a little extra something in the sky i love it i really do just get that pure pale white going on down here well not quite pure but you know what i mean pale white right there kind of a nice transition and if you want to probably be a good idea to, to just grab a little red mix that in and even put a touch of pink here at the transition good makes it a little more smooth we'll need to do a little blending but not a whole lot i think you're going to be surprised how how little i i blend this there just finishing up the softening that little opening up at the top let's grab our filbert brush and i just want to kind of put back some of the clouds and just cover it up of course we did it in the wrong order if you did it in the hmm, where's my blender brush going if you did it in the right order you wouldn't have to do this but i just can't help it i love doing stuff in the wrong order so there you go we get to paint the clouds in again it gives me a nice opportunity to make a little adjustment here and there and i like that plus it probably drives people nuts <laughs> and that's a lot of fun too there now it's time to paint the little sun so you could either just paint it in or you could wipe it off or you could do both so i'm going to try wiping it off first see what we get i'm going to go pretty much just right in this area it doesn't really matter kind of wherever it makes sense for you just off center would be good i'm going to just set my little paper towel down oh well, it's actually a shop towel of course but i just rub it hmm, not bad but you see why it was easier to do that versus versus um, you know, going through the trouble of trying to paint it with all that slippery paint up there. Okay, now wipe your blender brush out really, really good and just give it a, a soft blend here and there. And then you can step back and make a choice. Do you want it brighter? If so, you're gonna need to add white. Let me see. It's pretty nice, but I'm gonna go brighter. Now, I'm, it's not perfectly circle, or not a like perfect circle, I should say. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> so it doesn't matter because I'm going to float a cloud underneath it. That was the plan. Here's some white on the detail brush. And I'm going to just go within my outlines and give this sun a little more sparkle. I think it's worth it. There. Just like this. Not a whole lot of paint. And you almost get that little halo effect because we wiped off the canvas that that area where there's less paints lighter in color beautiful make sure you have a clean detail round brush when you do this though that's one that's one thing to be to be sure of all right now we need to float at least just a soft cloud not much of one just a, a little one right over right over this little sun area like that that's just so beautiful it makes it feel like it's part of the painting really does nice maybe just make it a little brighter yellow that's really really pretty as you can see here i couldn't resist putting in some sun rays i also softened the sun like a, a whole bunch i was going to come up with a percentage i couldn't figure it out so a whole bunch <laughs> and i also just couldn't resist on those sun rays the trick to sun rays is one direction and stop and clean your brush out we we'll wipe it off don't don't wash it wipe it really really good and come back up and do it again that is the only trick to sun rays at least with the oils the acrylics <laughs> completely different but that looks that looks good that looks really good okay uh, maybe a final blend just a little here and there kind of <laughs> put my hand down on the canvas while doing all of that. I don't want to over blend. I want there to be brush strokes. I like them. I think they add a little variety. And uh, whoever ends up buying the painting will actually just, you know, be able to, it's hard to see in the camera, but be able to look and see all these different brush marks and textures in the clouds. And it just gives a little movement that I, that I like. So we're going to leave most of that. All right. Long explanation for not much. All right. We're going to take our, uh, take our 
brown and maybe just some muddled colors here. I really don't care what it is. All right, we're going to paint in. We're going to paint in our background bushes. I might make, uh, yeah, let's go right here. Maybe make a little bit of a, a, like a valley kind of a thing. Not really, you know, this is all very close, but it wouldn't hurt us to get a, a little bit of a sketch in here. Of course, we need a little walking path. Something very subtle today, nothing too crazy. Maybe in that area is okay. We can change it. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's so easy to just to just make changes. So there you go. Put a, a little bit of little bit of texture there. Okay, sketch done. It was an easy sketch. We'll just continue here in the background. Some beautiful colors. I'm going with kind of some golden tones. Not so much because it's autumn, although it certainly could be. That's up to the viewer. But more what I'm excited for is just these sunset colors. So pretty. We're going to showcase that sky and these beautiful colors. Now we'll take a nice dark color and go right under this grass. You can see I just spent a couple seconds highlighting it. Although we'll probably do some more here in a little bit. Just started to establish a highlight there. Painted some large trees just with kind of smudging strokes. We'll need to highlight those. Just simple stuff, but stuff that we've got to get done. All right, now we don't need to bring these too far out because I think we're going to have a larger bush or forest, you know, maybe bring the tree down. I don't know. We're going to do something over here, and so I don't want to cover it with this color necessarily. We'll need to wait and see. All right. Rub this in real hard. Make sure it's stained. You know, the canvas is well stained with this. It's so important. And then as you go out to the left here, perhaps we want a yellow tree, kind of like a like an autumn golden colored tree maybe or we'll just sort of start working in those tones see that nice that's gonna be so pretty but just building all this color in the underpainting makes such a difference doesn't it cool just continue to work here maybe just a little taller bush right there good enough that looks actually looks pretty decent I like that. We covered up more of the grass than I was thinking, but oh well, at least we didn't spend just a second on it, right? Now I'm beginning to layer on some highlight here to this larger tree. I don't, <laughs> I don't want to cover up everything. That would be so sad. The background there, we want to keep that intact with, you know, with as little covering it as, as possible. We'll still make it a nice little tree. <laughs> I don't really care about there. It's kind of blank in that area, so let's cover that up. But we'll try to leave those pretty areas. You'll notice that nothing is crazy. Like if you look at the colors in the trees, and nothing like that sky. That's because I want you to be drawn to the sky and not bounce all over the place. Um, I did add a little highlight here, and let's go ahead and do that right here as well. I can just wipe my brush out so that it's a little bit clean at least. And we'll take some more yellow and white. Let's just see about. Lots of paint. Let's just see about getting, maybe we'll start here on the background. It makes more sense. And I'll just sort of drop in at least a couple of little leaves. This is just not a very far painting, you know, the little bushes. I mean, it's, it's not far away. So we're pretty quickly using these comma strokes, you know. Sometimes you would just do them on the big tree, but we're going to do them even in the middle ground as well. There. What's nice is this just layers, the soft brush layers so easily over this background. And these colors sort of match. So if a little mixing goes on, it's not as big of a deal as, as normal. So anyway, kind of pretty. We won't do the same old dead color over and over again. We'll change it up, make it a little bit exciting. That's pretty. I like that a lot. Just starting to glow. That's what we want. We want a lot of light toward the middle of the painting. In fact, we might even make that darker orange or darker, just more silhouetted. I don't know. <laughs> Who knows? So I'm back here to this tree, and I wanted to make sure that I, I let you guys know what was going on here, because it's kind of interesting. So I was standing back looking at the painting like I always do. Every few minutes, literally every few minutes, I'm standing back, if not more. Sometimes it's every other brush stroke, just depending on what I'm painting. But anyway, the point here is, when I was standing back, I'm looking, and it was like one tree, one tree, about the same height. You know what I mean? It was kind of framed in. Didn't particularly care for it being the same height or similar height. Uh, and it was also similar shape. So this one's kind of fairly straight, and this one was fairly straight. And it's kind of the way I had it mapped out, but it 
you know, sometimes what looks good, you know, as an idea doesn't exactly look good on the canvas. And you know, that happens. So what I'm doing is I'm changing it just slightly to bring a few of these delicate little limbs and leaves outward over kind of some of the darker sky. And you see, it's just already, it's already looking better. <laughs> it's nice. I don't really, don't really want, you know, too much variety in color. I'm mostly just going yellow and white. A little variety here and there is okay, but I'm not going, not going with a lot of shadow or anything. I'm just allowing my background to kind of work for me. I'm kind of adding a few more of these little leaves, just some red ones really, just to break it up and just add color to this tree. I started with some darks and then added some more red ones. Of course, we still have to highlight the trunk, so of course that's out of order. Well, what are you going to do? All right, now let's see if we can't pick out a, a color in this mess. Here we go. Some some form of green if I can find some a little bit of yellow green uh, there's still some kind of some orange tones or some yellow ochre tones in there because you wouldn't want to just use yellow green and white for a sunset painting but I definitely want there to be a green feel to this this is grass and the grass is not losing its leaves you know it may be uh, well actually it could, it could totally be brown you know in fact I think we got that back there but I want a little green in my grass it just depends on where the scene is and, you know if 10 people looked at it, there would be 10 different locations. You go, oh, this looks like this area or whatever, you know? I don't know. Let your viewer decide. It doesn't matter. That's so cool. Look at that. I wipe my brush out, grab a little red. There, that's cool. Just change it up. Get some beautiful, just different things happening. Of course, this is just a background. We'll, we'll add more and more detail as we come forward, but it won't be quite as bright. Now, this is where the path disappears, right behind that. Good, and then what we'll do is we'll transition into the fan brush and get some good crunchy texture. Now, there's plenty of shadow and highlight down, so I'm just blending here with the fan brush. It doesn't take a whole lot, just, just a little. Pretty soon, this whole thing just starts <laughs> from looking really weird to looking really good very quick and if you're if you're interested in you know demonstrating painting real quick uh, interrupting that thought I just want to highlight this little spot if you're ever interested in like doing demo paintings or whatever this is one of the best techniques you can use because it makes people think that you're completely crazy and then you get to go back and kind of make it you know make it so much prettier so so great in just a few brush strokes and it's it's kind of fun to see reactions there isn't it so just something to something to think about. There, I kind of wipe my brush in between the light and dark. Just keeps everything a little bit cleaner. That looks pretty decent though. You noticed I, I didn't drive myself nuts trying to cover each individual canvas hole because it just doesn't matter. There, and then what you can do is you come forward, you know, into the painting a little more, you can start pushing up and getting yourself larger strokes. Same fan brush, same idea. Just instead of down in the background, you go up. And you'll end up taking that dark and pulling it into the light. And the same is true when you're in the light areas. And you get bigger grass blades. So that is definitely something you're going to want to do. Should have done that over here. You see the difference. Oh, big difference. Nice. Nice and dark over here. So, so subtle. That's good. And then you can kind of maybe just with a little dark so you can just kind of give yourself some, some shadows where you need them and just play around with this. Get some good, get some good detail going. Pretty minimal effort for such an amazing result actually. Now let's drop in a path. And this path really just has been sitting here all, the whole day, hasn't it? Uh, that's all right. We're finally getting to it. Now I'm trying to go mid, maybe just a little too dark, surprisingly. Let me just, uh, let me just get a little purple, I guess. <laughs> there. Yeah. See, the thought is trying to get this not so, not so black that it goes right with the almost black grass. I'm okay with, the, you know, having super dark in the foreground, but just it wouldn't make sense to have it all just so dark you can't see what's happening. So that's why we're lightening the path, so you can see what's happening. <laughs> yep. All right, a little more white. And what, of course, we'll do, just like about any other path, we will 
will lighten as we go back. Also, we'll start warming it up a little more with our yellow and golden golden tones. Nice. And of course, you ruin the grass tops. And yeah, we don't care. We'll go put them put them right back in. Nice. Lighter still. As you work almost all the way back. And it slips right behind the path there, which is totally nice. All right. Always make your grass a little more, you know, into the path than you want in the final product because the path has a tendency to, to grow <laughs> as you change and adjust it. Now I'm just adding a little shading here to the to the side of the road, and this will help it to look recessed, you know, worn in, kind of like a divot, and it will also help to enhance the look of the sun being low and casting, you know, a shadow across most of the path. That's pretty good. And just, of course, a couple of dots here and there up in the grass is very, very nice because it helps to break it up, you know. In fact, it wouldn't hurt to just do a dot or two kind of there. We'll bury it in grass later, you know, with a liner brush, we'll bury it in the grass. But that's pretty good. Just those little details, they go a long way. They really do. You shouldn't, uh, shouldn't skip it. <laughs> there. Wouldn't even hurt to just get maybe what feels like a little of the road color right in, in there. There. Okay. Well, we'll have to push all of that back, but that's a good start. Let's go right over here and uh, maybe go with just a subtle highlight for this tree trunk. Wow, I, I didn't even put it in very sharp, so we'll need to sharpen this tree a little. So what I mean, the, the trunk's a little fuzzy. So when you highlight it, we'll make sure we kind of do a well-defined highlight. Not bright, not super bright, but definitely well-defined. Nice. Maybe a little flare out at the base, I don't know. We'll see, that's kind of mostly covered anyways. This one maybe has a little more highlight. It looks like it certainly would. <laughs> so we'll put a sliver of highlight right down the side there. Good. Not too low. Mostly up here. Now we're going to go ahead and just drop in the last few details here. Some, you know, some blades of grass, just highlights, bits and pieces, sticks, of course, tree limbs, all that good stuff. Got to happen. Would be really, um, be kind of a selling, selling your painting short to stop without doing this liner brush work. You know, this makes a huge difference. You, you can bring a painting from, and I, I often say this, I don't know how much I say it on the videos, but when I'm talking to people about liner brush work, if, you know, so much of the time I'll be like, oh, you know, it's nice, but it's missing something. It's not, it doesn't feel finished and I'm technically finished, like everything's in. And then you get the liner brush out and all of a sudden everything's okay. You know, it's that kind of thing that happens so much actually. Just the liner brush work makes all the difference. So the point in saying all of that was <laughs> don't skip it. Just get in here and enjoy. Nice thin paint, just bright enough to show. Maybe uh, that's kind of an orange tone over there. So I'm going to change, get something a slightly more orange tone just to match. Yeah, there we go. It's lighter, but it definitely kind of not so yellow. Now down here, maybe a little darker. It's a sunset, so the colors are, you know, it's a little different than normal. I might not go as bright as I usually do in the foreground. I think I'm going to tone it down. So there it is. That's kind of a, that's a pretty dark color for the liner brush grass. There, that's pretty cool. I did just a couple of quickie details with the, uh, with the detail brush. <laughs> I love doing that. And uh, just kind of indicate little sticks and, and leaves and just anything, just quick, quick blobs of color. Now I'm pushing all of that back. Stand back here, make sure we don't get too crazy, you know, too carried away and lose all our darks. We don't want to do that, of course. But that is really making a huge difference. Just those little subtle look at, you don't even need to reload. Just take the paint, whatever's left over and whatever's on the canvas and just keep going in these dark areas. See that? That's all it takes. Go both directions. 
just just go crazy with detail. Mm. Just just wonderful. All right, now take take some uh, just some dark brown. Really anything. You shouldn't have to mix up paint usually when you use the liner brush. There should be something on your palette after all of this time. Just select a color and go with it. Maybe add a branch or two. Add some extra detail. Not so many here. Just enough. I don't want to take away from the beautiful effect of those kind of almost airy, mysterious leaves kind of floating out there. I just like that look. I will just, just connect a few of them though. All right, well, I think we have a finished painting. Now, remember that I'm going to put this one up for sale on the website, so check the link as soon as you see this video, and hopefully you guys will get a chance to buy it. If not, there should be plenty of other ones there. Also, don't forget to check out our DVDs and our brushes. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.